ask you a question. This is something that comes up a lot too with the women that I speak with is that uh, it seems like there are men out there of all different ages, but of course this is a, for the most part a little more mature audience where it seems like the men are not very motivated or they're not doing a whole lot. And part of that may be this hormonal thing that you were talking about where their testosterone is low. But uh, what are some ideas or what are some tips besides this idea of receiving of how a woman can get more from a man without making him feel like she's trying to change him? Because I see headlines out there like how to make a man commit or how to make a man fall in love with you. And I'm like, sometimes those things feel a little manipulative, manipulative to me. But I guess I'm asking, how can we bring out the best in them or how can we invite them to step up into that masculine. Okay, so the first step is, yes, you women have the power to bring out the best in men, which means he will change, but only because he wants to change as opposed to you sort of uh, manipulating or forcing a change. And so the dynamic, there's four steps in that. Step one is stop trying to change him in any way. That's heaven to a man. That means no complaining, no directing, no improving. That means noticing how you will tend to control. And every woman, every man, when we're not getting what we need, we want to change our partner because we go, oh, they made me so happy. Now I want to try to change them. And now they're not, so I have to change them back or I have to get them how to do it better. So the first step is noticing how you will seek to change your partner and stop. Second step is to recognize that when you're trying to change your partner, which you've just recognized, it's because you're not getting something you need. That's step two. And step three is, step two then is recognize you're not getting what you need. You have to give yourself what you need. So that's self-reliance on how to find hormonal balance without depending on your partner. That means in practical terms, how to be happy without depending on a man. You depend on a man to be happier. You don't depend on a man to be happy. That's a basic truth in my message. If you wanna take your relationships to an ecstatic level, you have to already be fulfilled within yourself, not dependent on a man to be fulfilled. But you are fulfilled through your life, not a man. Your man in your life can bring you to a higher level. And that's the orgasmic state. That's the romantic state. That's the naked state. That's where, you, you know, you can love your work, but you can't walk around naked and have people adore you. Okay? <laughs> that's not gonna happen. So this happier state is something that you can achieve through intimacy and the safety of that by picking a partner and so forth. So uh, you, you want to achieve, the second step is, how to bring myself back into hormonal balance. If you're wanting to change your partner, generally you're out of balance. You're dissatisfied, you're looking for more. Now you come back to giving yourself more. And what will that look like? We'll talk about in a minute. Once you give yourself more, you're back into balance, then you give more. But this time you give your partner what they need, not what you need, not what you think they should need, but you learn how to give them what they need. And as I mentioned, men particularly, and you'll see throughout this whole series, Men particularly want to feel accepted, they want to feel appreciated, they want to feel trusted, they want to be admired, they want to be the hero, they want to feel like they're contributing to your well-being in some meaningful way. That is masculinity. There will be some men when you ask them, they're more on their female side, so they'll say, oh, you know, I want to be able to share my feelings and my emotions and I want her to be there for me just like I'm there for her in that emotional way. And yes, there's some truth to that, but if it becomes a dominant need in a man, he becomes too estrogen oriented. So we have to remember that when you're listening to different men, some men are more on their female side and it will be confusing because they'll talk about things that women primarily need and because they can feel those needs because when you have more estrogen, you will have all the needs that a woman has. <laughs> if you have more testosterone, you'll be more on your male side. You want to solve problems and fix things and do all that stuff. So it can be very confusing when you ask somebody what they need or what's important to them. What I'm telling you is what I've learned from my 40 years of experience is that men need more testosterone. And testosterone is generated in both men and women when you celebrate, appreciate them. Oh, look what a good job you did. I need your help. The fireman who goes into the fire, he's the hero. That's his testosterone shoots way up. This is what if you need more testosterone, what you need is more test, you need more appreciation, acceptance for who you are and trust. If you want more estrogen, what you need is someone to care more about you, you're special, your priority, someone who understands you, understanding is penetrating into your feelings and your thoughts and your wishes and wants and needs. 
and somebody who honors you as much as they honor themselves or honors you even more than themselves sometimes, prioritizing you, and that's called respect. That's what women need most. We live in a culture that says women should learn to respect men. No, that's the dysfunctional, re that's why we're so dysfunctional is women yielded their own needs to respect men when really who needs more respect in our society today is women. Not that men don't deserve respect, not that men don't need respect, but when you respect someone, it doesn't make testosterone. When you admire someone, when you appreciate someone, it makes more testosterone. And you can also respect them for their estrogen stimulation. But it's not like, what respect is, is yielding your needs for the needs of another. You respect your children by getting up in the middle of the night and feeding them. You don't wanna feed them, you wanna go to bed, you wanna sleep, but you honor someone by sacrificing for them. And that's what men, noble men, always respect the family. You know, when the ship's going down, it's women getting in the boats first, and it's all men for yourself. You know, this is where we are, where men in the past had learned to respect women. And then we, we got off track, without a doubt, where women lost respect and this sexual repression and pushing women down and so forth. And it was just an ignorant time. But today, what this whole women's movement is about is we deserve equality. That means we deserve respect. Because when you respect someone, it makes more estrogen. But if you have to fight for that respect, which is, happens a lot, what you've become is a man to get to try to get your female needs met. But it's an oxy. It's like a. Uh, it's like a, a strategy doesn't work. If you have to fight for respect, then you're on your male side. What you're looking for is a woman who will respect you. Which is why what you want is a man who's pursuing you. They're the ones that will respect you the most. So appreciating, accepting, and trusting a simplified way of understanding what men need most. So when you go step two, where you're, you learn to balance your hormones, come back to happiness from a place of fullness, now overflow by giving him what he needs, not doing things for him, but appreciating what he has done for you, what he is doing for you. That's the greatest gift you can give to a man. Then step four, that's the one we're waiting for, you can ask for support. But when you ask for support, you're not trying to change him, you're expressing a preference rather than a demand. And I can give you the words for how to ask men for support, but if you're coming from a place of saying, my happiness is dependent upon you changing, men will resist. Just like if a woman, if a woman's in a bad mood and a man says, look, get over it, you know, why are you upset about that? You shouldn't feel that way. We're trying to change how you feel. It's not gonna make you feel better. And what we're saying to you is that my happiness is depending upon you feeling different. Men should not be that way. Men should be embracing a woman's moods wherever they are, up and down, up and down. That's giving her what she needs to stabilize her hormones, which is showing caring, empathy, understanding, penetrating into her inner psyche, understanding where she is, feeling empathy, honoring her, respecting her, letting her feel equal, in terms of opportunity and respect. And that's what we're trying to achieve in the world. But you're not gonna get it by fighting men. You're gonna get it by loving men. They will give more when men get what they need and then women go to step four, which is asking for what they want as a preference. That, when you're in an intimate relationship, and we're talking about intimate relationships here, then, then a man is free to choose to give you more. Then he changes based upon his choice rather than feeling that I have to change in order to make her happy. It becomes, I want to give her this because I see how it will make her happy. So it's a delicate distinction there. You have to have some wisdom to decide, to distinguish between demanding and preference. But if you express a preference to your partner and they're not getting an abundance of love, usually they don't respond. So the idea is how to go through those four levels again and again to get more from a man, which means to bring out the best in him, just as I would bring out the best in my wife. And if you're married, you're having a sexual relationship, the best time to express your preferences is after having an orgasm. Because <laughs> a man feels he's getting what he needs. Okay, so what you said something, I can tell you the words. Can you tell us, can you model really quickly what it might sound like for a woman to ask for something she wanted yes. in a way that a man could respond, assuming we've gone through the four steps? Yes, now let's look at the words. Give me one request a woman would want. Just let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that. Uh, maybe specifically. he could do more around the house. Okay, let's call it. He, he doesn't empty the trash, okay? Or he could do, he could clean. What, what would, give me a specific. First of all, that's an abstract. You, I want you to do more around the house. That means nothing to a man. It has to be a specific task that he does and gets rewarded for. 
So give me a, a task that would be part of doing more about the house. Uh, he would do the dishes. All right, that's a big one. So it'd be, let's say she's doing the dishes and he's not. Already he's been trained that he doesn't have to do the dishes to make you happy. So you're happy and you're doing the dishes and now you want him to do the dishes the way you would start is you simply say, oh honey, I'm really tired tonight. Would you help me? And he'd say, what is it? And he said, would you do the dishes tonight? And he'd say, he'd grumble a little bit and you would then go, most women at that point would go, oh, okay, I'll just do it myself because he grumbles. You have mm -hmm. to recognize you're asking him to do a new job. He has to decide whether to do it. Is it necessary? Is it required? I haven't had to do it before. Why do I have to do it? Now? There's sort of this resistance a man will have to being asked to do more because he gets the message with a request that, gee, I haven't been doing enough. You know, I work really hard. I'm really tired. I did this whole thing and now I have to do more. So, and maybe his mother always did the dishes. So he has this idea that women do dishes. The lot has to overcome there. So what you do is you say, honey, I'm really tired tonight. Would you, would you, you could actually start with, would you help me with the dishes? See, again, every job, every request, you wanna go gently, little progression, little progression. A baby doesn't learn to walk, they start to crawl first. That's normal life. It's a, you know, trees don't just suddenly make flowers, you know, it takes a season to get there. So everything is slow, real change is slow. So you basically, oh, I'm really tired tonight, would you help me? Would you bring over the dishes and wash them and I'll put them in the dryer, whatever, you know, make a little request. And then when he does it, he experiences a little change and you delight in it. He gets to see, it's like, oh, it's so much help. It feels so good. Men will always respond to what feels good. Then another night, you do that again and do that again. And then no big discussion, your job is this, my job is that. You would just simply say, oh, I'm so tired. Would you do the dishes tonight? And because he's so used to getting rewarded for doing this little thing, then he's happy to do it. But you have to realize a lot of men, when it comes to dishes and housework, have been trained in a culture where men didn't do that. They didn't experience growing up doing that, seeing dad do that. Oh, you have huge advantage if he saw his dad doing it. But if his dad never did it, his part of his training is you don't do that. So you have to gradually adjust to this and be okay with that. Realize there's logic to that rather than the other logic, which is we both have a job. Why am I doing this? You should do it too. That you should do it too attitude is the opposite of accepting where a person is. So it's a gradual movement towards greater intimacy by little requests, rewarding those little requests, then he gives more and he gives more and he gives more. And let's say he had a huge resistance at washing dishes, then you start with something else, you know, oh my gosh, you know, would you help me by doing this? But it always comes from a thing of, he comes home, he's kind of like in his own world, he's in his cave line world, and you just say, oh honey, when you have a chance, would you help me? That's how you introduce it. Honey, when you have some time tonight, would you help me? He's gonna go, well, what, what do you want? What do you want? You go, oh, I'll tell you later. Just let me know when you're available. I just need like 10 minutes. Give him a time limit, give him a little request, and then tell, he says, well, what is it? I wanna do it now. Okay, well, only take 10 minutes. He says, okay, what is it? And you say, would you help me put away the dishes or would you help me unload the dish, you know, dishes? A specific request, not a general thing, we're making a policy here, a specific request and a reward afterwards. And again, women have to look at their own resistance to that reward afterwards because she's going to be feeling, look, I've been doing them every night. I didn't ask for a big reward or parade. Right. 